Yo, what is going on you guys? This is Mike or Geekamon and welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. So today we are going to talk about the most asked question on my YouTube channel. Every single video I post, I get probably 40, 50 comments that say the same thing. Geek, can you please teach us how to snipe in Destiny 2? So today, that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to go through 10 tips that really help me with sniping and hopefully will help you improve your game in the Crucible. So before we begin, make sure you guys subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't and without wasting any more time let's jump into the top 10 things you can do to improve your sniper game in destiny 2. number 10 handling flinch now as we all know in destiny 2 flinch is a huge problem if you're a sniper the small close range maps are absolutely dominated by shotguns and pulse rifles it's the perfect combination one shot your enemies up close or three burst them at a distance this is a fairly common play style and part of the reason why snipers are not seen often in the crucible regardless of how far away you are pulse rifles will usually outgun snipers in a one-on-one -on -one situation if both opponents are looking at each other and already already ready to fire, nine times out of 10, the pulse rifle is going to win. So what can we do about this? In my opinion, learning to manage the flinch is extremely important. Practice going up against pulse rifles, learn where your reticle bounces, and stop swapping to a shotgun two minutes into the game. Now this isn't to be sarcastic, I genuinely see a lot of players who go up against a good pulse rifle player with a sniper, and after getting flinched back into orbit, decide, forget it, we're putting on a shotgun. I really recommend if you're trying to improve your sniping, try to leave it on even if you're losing to pulse rifles. Practice getting flinched. The more you're flinched, the more you'll be used to it. You'll learn when your reticle comes back down or you'll learn when it is time to dip out and readjust on the engagement. You can try to add mods and perks to your armor to improve the unflinching factor, but honestly for sniper rifles, the difference is really not noticeable enough. All right, number nine feet on the ground. If you've played Destiny for very long, you know that in-air accuracy is one of the ways that Bungie mitigates the skill gap. If you're up in the air with a weapon, odds are you're at a disadvantage against a person who has their feet on the ground. This is because when your feet are on the ground, your bullet goes right where your reticle is. When you're up in the air, you can't guarantee that your shots, even aiming at their head, are going to land. The best advice I can give you here, especially if you're playing Hunter, all too often I see players double jump into an engagement. That's probably one of the worst things that you can do. Once you've used your double jump, you no longer have a movement option to escape from the fight. You've also put yourself up in the air, which gives you an accuracy disadvantage. And so what ends up happening is you end up up in the air, floating towards your opponent just to die. Regardless of snipers or shotguns, my recommendation on how to approach a 1v1 is to slide into the engagement, keep your feet on the ground, use walls and barriers for cover, get your shot off, then use your aerial move to escape. Also another note, if you're a hunter, sniping and then shade stepping away, it's a great technique especially if you get flinched because you can get out of a bad situation. Alright, number eight, do what I say and not what I do. Don't peek twice. If you watch my videos, I am as guilty of this as anyone. There are so many times where I miss a shot, back behind the barricade, and then peek one more time to try to get the kill. More often than not, I'll end up dying. In Destiny 1, it was because I got domed in the head. In Destiny 2, I usually end up getting team shot. So my advice is to try to readjust, try to find another lane, and if you have to peek twice, at least crouch. Because that way, at least your enemy will have to readjust their reticle. All right, number seven, get the right perks. Now, honestly, I think this is more of a future dated piece of advice in today's current meta the flinching mods the targeting mods they all seem to do very very little i'll be honest i haven't tested the enhanced sniper rifle targeting but the normal and the rifle targeting seem to do next to nothing i can say however that the ammo scavenger perks on the arms and the class items will allow you to double and triple the ammo you pick up from green blocks as a sniper this is huge because you're always at an ammo disadvantage when you're killing opponents from range even if you win the 1v1, you've burned a bullet, you're 100 meters away, odds are you're not going to get to that sniper block. So I would definitely put on the ammo perks and that way you can spend less time trying to pick up ammo and more time honing in your skills. Alright, number six, learn the lanes and know the map. Every class of weapon, regardless of its strength, has a purpose in Destiny 2. Snipers are perfect for holding down long lanes and being able to one-shot kill at almost any range. The problem is that they're very hard to use, they have a high skill ceiling, and most of the Destiny Destiny maps are very small. However, this does not mean that they're totally useless. The best advice I can give you here is to go into private matches on the maps that you struggle sniping on. 
load up an empty game of control, and simply walk around and look at the sniper lanes. Start to understand the flow of enemies capturing zones and where they transition to. If you can predict enemy movement and know where your enemies are going to be, you'll be able to get the shot off before they're even able to flinch you. A lot of situational awareness comes with just playing the game and experiencing it, but you'd be surprised how much getting a lay of the land on a new map can help you. All right, number five. Pick one sniper rifle. You've heard the phrase jack of all trades, but I prefer the term master of one. Honestly, you don't have to be good with every sniper rifle, you just need to be good with one. The reason for this is a lot of snipers will have different handling, different ADS speed, different aim assist, different damage. No two snipers are exactly the same. So I would recommend taking all of your sniper rifles, putting them into your inventory, and over the next few weeks, cycle through them until you find one that you feel fits your playstyle. This will also help you learn whether you like your sniper in the primary slot or the energy slot. If you're a huge fan of the Risk Runner SMG, then you might like a primary like the Long Shadow or the Bite of the Fox. But if your best friend is Ace of Spades, then you might do better with an energy sniper like Fake Cries Foul. Like I said, all snipers are different. I would recommend you try out a whole bunch of them before you decide sniping is not for you. You might be surprised with what you come up with. My personal favorite sniper in the game right now is actually a blue sniper, the Akin LR2. It's a mid-damage, high aim assist sniper that has great handling, snapshot sights, and reminds me of the old longbow from Destiny 1. So definitely try them all because you might be surprised with which one you end up using. PSA, the chaperone does not count. All right, number four, pairing it with the right weapon. Now this is huge for snipers in Destiny 2. If you're running a shotgun, you can run a hand cannon, a pulse rifle, a scout rifle, and even a grenade launcher and probably do okay. Snipers, however, require you to be a little more tactful about which weapon you use in the other slot. If you're just getting into sniping, I would definitely recommend an auto rifle or a hand cannon. Both of these are not totally outmatched by shotguns, but unlike SMGs, they're not totally useless at range. Once you've honed in your skills with your sniper and you can really rely on the sniper to get most long range kills, then you can start to transition into pairing it with things like SMGs or sidearms. But like I said, for ease of use, auto rifles are probably the most versatile. Hand cannons are a little harder to use, but they have a higher skill gap. So something like Ace of Spades Sniper is actually really viable, but you definitely want to be able to land those hand cannon shots. All right, number three, find your sensitivity. Now I made a how to snipe video back in Destiny 1, and I believe one of the comparisons I made was comparing Destiny to Call of Duty. A lot of Call of Duty players like to run really, really high sensitivity. Because of the size of the hitbox and the handling on snipers in Call of Duty, if you're good on max sensitivity, it ends up giving you a huge advantage. In Destiny, however, it doesn't quite work the same. Handling on most weapons compared to Call of Duty feels rather sluggish, so your first instinct is to up your sensitivity. The problem with doing this with a sniper rifle is that snipers have very low aim assist values, which means in order to get kills, you have to be very accurate. Over the past few weeks, I've watched and given feedback on a lot of players sniping gameplay, and the biggest problem that I see is over aiming. Whether you're hard scoping, drag scoping across a lane, or even attempting to hip fire someone. I was really shocked at the amount of times that the reason the player I'm watching misses was almost never because they fired too early. Nine times out of ten, the sniper reticle would come across the lane, but before the player could pull the trigger would continue on and most players missed just beyond. I would call this over aiming. And it's a common side effect for new snipers who run higher sensitivity. So the best thing that you can do if you're just starting out sniping is to take whatever number sensitivity that you like to run and drop it by two or three. This is not to say it's impossible to snipe on 10 sensitivity. And of course, the goal is to eventually find your sweet spot, whether that be 1 or 10. But lowering your sensitivity initially will allow the game's aim assist to do more for you and prevent you from overcorrecting your snipes. Trust me here, drop it for a while, and once you've mastered it, you can of course start to move it back up. I found, however, that I actually enjoy sniping on a lower sensitivity. The playstyle is much different than the running gun of Stompies and a shotgun. So for me, being able to land my shots was more important than being able to do a 180. Like I said, I'm sure there are plenty of you out there who can snipe on 10 sensitivity. I'm sure I will get plenty of comments that say things like, Geek, I have no problem sniping on 10 sensitivity. More power to you, and I respect that, but you've also made it this far into a video called How to Snipe. So keep an open mind, try it out, everyone plays on a different sensitivity. For context, I usually play on 5. For more context, the entire first year before Forsaken came out, I played on 3. The transition to 5 probably took 
took me two weeks or so to get used to, but I mostly did it because of the shotgun meta and I didn't want to be swapping my sensitivity back and forth between five and three. So I said, forget it. I'm just going to master sniping on five. All right, number two, this is a huge one and one I don't think many players have ever considered. Also, ironically, I'm pretty sure that this is a running joke in the Call of Duty scene, but aim higher. Think back to the last time you sniped. How many times did you hit a body shot and think, that should have been a headshot. In Destiny 2 specifically, there is a gap above players' heads that is considered part of the hitbox. However, players' necks, cloaks, and the lower portion of the back of their head are for some reason not considered headshot hitbox. The other thing is that if you like to be a more aggressive sniper and you slide into shots and pull your reticle up, you'll notice that you end up aiming at players' chests. If you don't believe me, hop into a game of Crucible and try to do quote-unquote aggressive sniping. What you'll notice is that the sniper seems to want to drag down. When I first started practicing this, I would literally slide into a close range engagement and hold up on the right thumbstick until I felt that I could possibly be above the person's head, and then I would fire. I think you guys will be surprised how helpful this can actually be. Like I said, hop into a game, really experience it, but I think this is one of the ways you can kind of overcome the sluggish sniper rifles in Destiny 2. So try it out, keep your sights up, and I think it will actually make you feel faster as a player. 10 out of 10 would recommend. All right, number one, and I know you guys hate this one, but it is so true. Practice. I posted in the forums recently some thoughts I had about sniper rifles in the current state of the game, their ease of use, what could be changed, what could be done differently, and of course, I got absolutely torn to shreds. But a trend I noticed is that most of the people who were hating on sniper rifles had less than 30 sniper rifle kills in their entire Destiny 2 career. I understand that the sniper playstyle is not for everyone, and this is not to throw shade at anyone in particular. But what I heard from the players who had not used snipers is that they weren't good with snipers. If you want to get good using sniper rifles, the best thing you can do is to use sniper rifles. You will have to accept the fact that your KD and your stats will probably drop for a short period of time, and you will probably get beyond frustrated at Telesto and shotguns. But if you want to go from somebody who has never used a sniper before to someone who has mastered one of the most niche playstyles in Destiny 2, the key is going to be taking these tips but actually applying them and practicing in Crucible. Feel free to go into private match with your buddies. Doing a 1v1v1 where everyone uses sniper rifles can be super helpful and can really help you improve your skills. But honestly, just hopping into quick play and not giving up and going to the shotguns is what will make you stand out as a rare breed of snipers in Destiny 2. All right, guys, I hope this video was super helpful. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. I tried to include a whole bunch of sniping gameplay that I got last night. If you've been following the channel, you know the rise of snipers is kind of a theme that we've been doing. So I felt like last night was the time to put on my favorite sniper and go for as many snipes as I possibly could. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, sub if you're new, and hit the bell if you haven't. The bell squad will make snipers great again. I'm super excited to see all you guys hop back out into the crucible, tear it up with the sniper rifle and show those shotgun apes who's boss. That's it for me guys. I will catch you in tomorrow's video. Thanks for watching. Peace. No